So what I want to talk to you is about temple correction because the temples have been ignored for too long and you need to correct them to get an overall oval heart-shaped v-shaped of a female face. Uh, males don't need the temple corrections as much as females. Females need a rounded temple. And the reason why you have problems with your temples is because of the fat pad loss. Just like everywhere else in the cheeks, in the under eye area, you have a fat pad in the temples that you gradually lose over time. And the fat pad is interesting because the fat pad includes the temples, but it also goes into the preauricular area, which is the area in front of the ear. And so when you have a temple hollowing, you always have to look in the preauricular area as well because it often is associated. So the idea is, is to replace the volume loss uh, with the, from the fat with filler. Okay, and this is the temple uh, fossa. And you can see how huge it is. It, it go, it, it goes all the way back into the hair bearing areas and it's very deep as well. So what is typically done to fill temples I think has been done wrong and that has been doing depot injections which is uh, injecting in bolus uh, boluses with filler onto the periosteum in the temporal fossa. The problem with that is is that you can see how big this fossa is and if you inject it in an area like so, it's very likely to spread throughout the temporal fossa because the deep temporal fascia, which I'm going to show you in a second, is very taut. It's almost like a trampoline. So if you kind of cause a little bit of elevation of the deep temporal fascia, it's going to press down and it's going to spread the product all over. So what ends up happening, you end up putting uh, a lot of product into the deep temporal fossa and you don't get much correction. So I'm proposing, and I'm not the only one, but I, I'm leading the pack to inject superficially in the temporal area because you use, you use less filler and you get a much better correction. So my preference for filling the temples is refine. And the reason why I like refine, Restful and Refine, is because it has a very high tissue integration and it spreads out very well. And that's what you want with these superficial injections. You don't need any lift like you would if you injected deeply. You want it just to spread evenly so because the tissue is very thin there and it, it, any thick product could be seen. And I'll show you how I, I actually diluted a little bit to make it spread more thinly. So. When you inject deeply in the temporal fossa, my theory is it spreads out a lot. It also goes down, down with the temporal muscle. So you really lose a lot of that product. There's not very much product being used. Okay, so um, here's the different layers of the temple. And you have the skin and you have the subcutaneous tissue. And then you have something called the temporal parietal fascia, which is also called the superficial temporal, uh, temporal fascia. Okay, and then there's an area just beneath that that has loose areolar tissue. That's the plane you want to get into. That's the plane that's deep to the vessels and it's superficial to the deep temporal fascia right here. Okay, so the deep temporal fascia is very thick, very taut, and, you're, and the, when I use cannulas, it's going to bounce off of it. It's not going to pierce it. So you want to be in that plane right there. See the superficial temporal fat pad is just below that plane. So, so it kind of makes sense. You're replacing the volume loss of this fat pad with filler almost exactly in the same area. There is no fat pad in the deep layer uh, along the periosteum. So let's go one more. Also, you know, let me just note, there's a frontal branch of the facial nerve in this uh, temporal parietal fascia. And oftentimes when I'm injecting in this area, you do get a little weakness of the frontal branch, so the forehead, but that's only temporary. That's a half hour, 15 minutes, and it goes away. But you just have to tell the patient that there is possibility that they're gonna have inability to raise their eyebrows. It's gonna be a little droopy, that's fine. 
So that's about it with uh, my didactics here. Let's go on to uh, how I dilute this. Let's move over here. So what I've done here is I've added a cc of lidocaine, 2%, and one cc of the refine. Sometimes I use two cc's, but, uh, and then I go back and forth with it, and sometimes I'll use another three cc syringe to get it mixed up, but I've already mixed this up. So um, there you go. I'm gonna fill it. So this is enough for, for this patient we only need about one syringe total, half a cc on each side, which is actually a complete cc once you add the lidocaine. I always use cannulas because there's a lot of vessels in this area and I'm going to show you that. Um, I, you have to use the largest cannulas because the larger cannulas are safer, they're going to bounce off the vessels more. And so I use a 23 gauge cannula in this area. It's also a little bit longer than the others. It's uh, 50 millimeter, it's soft fill cannula. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna enter here in the zygomatic arch area, and we're gonna fill this area. We can also fill above the orbit, because in the supra orbital area, because there's a fat pad up here, as I showed you previously, that gets lost as well. And you can also go along the orbital rim. But you can do all this from this one position. You can even go behind the hairline, which I think is actually important, some dots don't feel that, but I think behind the hairline helps you elevate here. And so let me just outline the area of the temporal fossa. So there's a temporal fusion line, and that's where the uh, end of the temporalis muscle is. But it goes way back in here, so the temporal fossa is huge. It, it, this whole big area here. So if you inject, uh, like Dr. Swift tells you to do, about right here, um, one centimeter, one centimeter, maybe you're about right there, you're not going to elevate all of the temporal fossa. I, I don't think that that's the correct way. So I, I'm, I'm proposing that you inject superficially here, underneath the vessels. Um, and let me just show you, uh, I, for uh, this is called the AccuVein. An AccuVein shows up the vessels in this area. Let me take this off. And this is kind of interesting. It shows you that there's these superficial vessels in the area right here and so forth. But you're going to be below those vessels. Occasionally you will have a vessel that tears a little bit. And what you do is you apply significant pressure and you avoid any type of hematoma or uh, complications that way. Um, so let's clean her off. Okay, for cleaning purposes, you must always use HIPAA cleanse. And um, I'll, I'll show you one other thing that I've been starting to use. It's called laser sin. Okay, and laser sin is a antibiotic solution. It's made up of hypochlorous acid, which is actually a dilute form of bleach. And it's okay to get actually in the eyes uh, and all over, and it kills bacteria as well. In a recent uh, meeting that I was at, the uh, FFAS meeting, there was discussion that there might be some resistance to HIPAA So if you use more than one type of cleaning agent, it's not a bad idea. So we'll just spray that on as well. Okay, and, and she'll wipe it. And keep in mind that when you wipe it, you need to use a sterile gauze, okay? So you don't have to buy them sterile. What we do is we buy the unsterile gauze and then we put it in the autoclave because you're only as good as your weakest link as far as sterility and everything that goes into this patient needs to be sterile. So let's um, first choose an entry point and um, when, I, when I do an entry point for the cannulas, you only have to do it just through the skin surface. You only have to go through the dermis. Um, any further and you risk uh, injuring vessels. And you always do it in the direction that you want it to go, the cannula at first. And you always do it in a sort of a tangential plane. If you're going down like this, you're gonna have problems getting the cannula to bend through that. So I, and I always tap, okay? and you almost pull the skin onto the needle. 
and you create a really small hole in the skin and keep in mind I'm sorry if this affects your vision but I need great light and I go to a lot of offices and they don't have great light and you need really good light so when you enter with the cannula you always enter at, with the, your hands at the hub and you're on top you're not underneath you're on top because what you do is you put it through the hole and you wiggle and all of a sudden I'm in and I'm all the way up here right quick all the way up to the temporal fusion line and so what you do is you do a retrograde injection and then I redirect it and I'm now above the orbital rim in the supraorbital hollow and you're doing retrograde technique and now I'm in the orbital rim and I'm going to give her a little lid lift with that okay and then I'm going to focus on the back part of the temple and I'm going to go a little bit further back and then remember this is like liposuction you have to bring the cannula almost all the way out when you're redirecting or the end of the cannula is going to go to the same area so now I'm into the hairline I'm past the temporal effusion line because oftentimes particularly if you're doing the depot injections with Sculptra or other products that temporal effusion line is very visible so you want to go beyond it and blend that in and now I so you, you got to be careful if you reach resistance you can do a little small bolus and that might lift up the plane for you okay and there I go and then I, I advance you're doing okay hon mm -hmm. this is my wife by the way she's a great patient she's a nurse here okay and now I'm into the hairline with my injection and I'm almost done with this injection here okay and you you completely fill this temple up and remember to take good before and after pictures okay and now now I'm into the hairline and retrograde technique okay something that you have to tell patients is occasionally their vessels seem a little more prominent and that resolves after a day or two okay so after I'm done I'm going to do a little massage and that sort of evens out the product and I'm just about done here and if you can do it properly there should be minimal bleeding minimal risk and a very nice correction I don't even need to massage this area so what I've done here is I've corrected the supraorbital hollow the temporal fusion line all throughout the temple back through the hairline and as well as along the supraorbital rim so I've done that all through this one incision and there we go and if there, there should be minimal uh, discomfort to the patient afterwards let's see can you raise your eyebrow no I know I can't Let, let's give it a try do you see you see <laughs> the eyebrow is temporarily paralyzed because of the lidocaine and that's fine that's just something you need to uh, tell the patient but what you do when you do this is you round out the upper face you call it what happens when you age is that the lower face gets heavy and the upper face gets hollow so you want to pull everything up and round out the upper face and that's how it's done she could use a little bit of filling in the forehead which I'm going to do at another uh, hour half hour aesthetic half hour but at this point I didn't want to do too much I didn't want to keep you guys too long but that's that's the uh, temporal hollow correction with Restylane refine and then when we're done we do a little bit more of this laser sin and that that's just one added protection it, it kills bacteria it kills viruses and it kills mycoplasma so that's a great so for more information, give us a call, 850-622-1214, and tune in next week on Wednesday. Somewhere between 4 and 5, we'll let you know, uh, Central Time, for another Aesthetic Half Hour. Thank you.